Because they know who I am. They've known who I am for the last 30 years. How you have became involved, first of all, in the bodybuilding scene. A brief rundown? It seems that everywhere I go, people ask me, is Mike O'Hearn on steroids? I got asked to be Mr. Olympia. I got asked via email and Facebook. I even got asked again at the gym last night. People have done entire videos weighing in on the topic, and articles have been written in magazines. It's really become quite the phenomenon. But here's what I do know about Mike. I know he was 270 pounds in high school. I know he deadlifted over 700 pounds when he was still a teenager. Other than his freakish combination of size, conditioning, and strength, I know Mike's never exhibited any of the other telltale signs of steroid use. He's never had a significant fluctuation in body weight. He's never had acne or been bloated with water retention. He's never ballooned up to over 300 pounds. His strength has never fluctuated significantly. Mike's a big boy. He doesn't need me swinging from his nuts. As a matter of fact, I spent the first 20 years of my career hating that fucker. 25 years ago, back in the early 90s, when I was pursuing my career in bodybuilding, Mike O'Hearn was already in the magazines. He was doing what I wanted to do, and he was doing it a hell of a lot better than I was. So I immediately started training for it because I wanted to beat him so bad. I used it as motivation for every workout. Now I laugh at the trolls who get all butt hurt about Mike O'Hearn, but I was that troll 25 years ago. I just didn't have a keyboard and my parents didn't have a basement. We were raised by OGs, not IGs. So we walked to the back of the gym, and there was Mike, on the incline press, with 405 on the bar, no spotter, training by himself. And just then, I had a moment of deja vu. Ever since I began training, back when I was in college, Gold's Gym Venice was the mecca of bodybuilding, a place where all the greatest bodybuilders in history would come to train with and learn from the other greats. Dozens and dozens of times over the decades, I've visited Gold's Venice, and most of those times, I would see Mike O'Hearn in their training, typically in the squat rack, with at least four or five hundred pounds in the bar. By himself, no spotter, no posse, no camera crew. Just grinding out heavy set after heavy set, writing down each lift in his book, sitting quietly between sets focused on the bar. This was the same scenario every time I saw Mike in the gym. Day after day, week after week, month after month, Year after year, decade after decade. Discipline, consistency, and hard ass work. There's do right things and then wrong things. I kept going baby step. I can take everybody. When they make a mistake, that's another day that I get ahead. is that he's even more dominant now. He's at his peak and dominating. So I want you to think about that for just for a second. In any endeavor, I don't care if you're in business, if you're an athlete, if you're in entertainment, to be dominant that late for that long to get better, you're talking about multiple decades of domination. Freaking savages, I love this. Freaking love this. But keep fighting. Try to try to be the one that makes it. Try to be the one person that gets over the hump. The hardest things that ever happened to me are the greatest things that ever happened to me in my life. I love being the underdog. I love that. I love. I, I come from a place where I'd rather be the underdog and have to fight and put in the work 
because I know I can outwork anybody. An actual approach that I still use today, I'll get up no matter what happens in life and get my work done. Humans are not equal. Sorry, we're not equal. There's different genetics, there's different things, but you can make yourself better no matter what your genetic makeup. You're talking about a, a, a sophomore in school. I was a monster. I was already benching over 400 pounds by the time I was 15, squatting 550 pounds. And it's like, you're gonna be a different creature now doing what you're doing. The idea that every brick I built, I need to make sure that brick stays there. I don't go in there and lift heavy weights because I have an ego. I like the mental battle within myself. I love that fight. I love knowing that, you know what? Continuously get better and better. My goal was all that work I put in, I get to keep it for a lifetime. The belief of something too heavy for you, there's, the mind just destroys you. And I wish that maybe that's one of the benefits I had is that my mind went the other way every single time. What is it that kept me in the game longer than anybody else? 539 fitness covers. <laughs> I mean, just imagine that for a second. It's the most covered person in the history of fitness, of bodybuilding, by far. I'm always getting ready. Mm. Always. And, and I've never not been getting ready. You can't beat the guy that never gives up. I'm that guy. Step off. That's it, that's all she wrote.